Stadium is the third largest stadium in the entire world, and right now it is filled to capacity and then some with nearly 111,000 screaming fans dressed head to toe and all white. This tradition started back in 2004. It has elevated this stadium into a new realm among college football's most electric environments. Tonight, that crowd anxiously awaits a top 20 matchup featuring two of college football's most historic programs with Big Ten East Division and even college football playoff implications on the line. It's the number 16 Michigan Wolverines coming into Happy Valley to take on the seventh ranked Penn State Nittany Lions. Hello and welcome into Com Radio's coverage of Nittany Lions football. I'm Mitch Stewart and joined alongside me is my partner and fellow Virginia native, Joe Skinner. Joe, yes, sir. what an absolutely electric atmosphere we have here tonight. There's an old saying that everything is bigger in Texas and that could not be more true for the location of the 84th edition of the Goodyear Cotton Bowl game. We're live here at AT&T Stadium, home of the Dallas Cowboys, the site for the first ever meeting between two of college football's stronger programs over the past few years. The number 17 Memphis Tigers won a school record 12 games in 2019 and route to their second American Conference Championship in six seasons. Today, they'll make their first appearance in a New Year's Six Bowl against an opponent that is in its third such game since 2016. Gentlemen, the 10th ranked Penn State Nittany Lions of the Big Ten. Hello and welcome Monday. into Com Radio's coverage of Penn State football. I'm Mitch Stewart and joined alongside of me is my good friend Brian McLaughlin. Brian, we just talked about it in the pregame. So a four play 32 yard drive for Penn State extends their lead from one point out to eight as they lead 21 to 13 over Memphis, 7.47 left to go in the first half when the Tigers will get the ball back. We mentioned before the break how the Tigers offense has been going backwards while Pitt State seems to have found their bread and butter and it exists with the Lawn Boys. Huge drive coming up here for Memphis, but you're right, it's about the rushing attack right now. 82 yards on the ground, Clifford got involved last drive. The misdirection last drive was key for Penn State. They had a couple nice play actions where it was really Memphis getting confused and then first run of the day for Devin Ford. He finds Pater. Penn State's offense and Tyler Bowen getting into a great rhythm here in the second quarter. Memphis starting to kind of feel like they might need to answer sooner rather than later. Their offense has to get back to what they were doing early, throwing the ball downfield to their receivers. Well, important to note, too, that that drive started with a sack. Yes. So they went backwards there, and then they got Clifford out wide, running the ball, and then they ran a similar style play to get Fryermuth open and play action before Devin Ford punched it in for the Nittany Lions. Deep kick here again from Stout. This one will be returned by Gibson along the near side, and that was not a great decision. He may have reached the 12-yard line or so before a half dozen Nittany Lions take him to the turf. Marquise Wilson in there, Brandon Smith, as well as Jonathan Sutherland. I mean, that was a gang tackle. Drew Hartlob also in there. Gibson may be feeling a little bit anxious. Feels like he needs to make a play. Justin Lucetta, big hit for Penn State as well. Gibson's been quiet, a big time player. Just four yards through the air so far for him and seven on the ground. Felt like he needed to do something. It ends up hurting his team more than helping him. So once again, back behind their own 20 yard line. Quads out to the far side for receivers. A lone receiver here on the near side is Coxie. White steps up. Now he's going to run the ball, and he makes Luketa miss before he slides down around the 17. And a good decision by White. We mentioned earlier in the broadcast, he's not really a runner, but we've seen him two or three times today tuck the ball and get five or six. Luketa was late getting onto the field there. Now he's jogging off. That opened up a door for White. Hurry up offense. Now it's a bubble screen of the play action to Jones along the far side. John Reed rips out, rips him out, excuse me, just across the 20 to that yard marker, and it's going to be a first down at the 22. So Memphis getting some momentum here now after Gibson put them in a bit of a rough position to start this drive. It'll be trips to the near side. Four receivers in the formation. Taylor Jr. is the tailback next to White. White looking left, looking towards his man, and it looked like he had Jones again. John Reed had that swallowed up. And once again, one of the situations where John Reed, if that ball is inbounds or catchable, he might have been able to intercept it. We've seen that happen twice. And then, of course, the deflection earlier in the game. Great job by Reed, staying step for step. Memphis has been best when White's extended plays. 
and trying to throw it downfield. But Penn State and Micah Parsons have kind of snuffed that out. He's been going wherever White is. Trent Gordon is also back in for Penn State. And it dis Isaac at D-line. This is going to be a, a false start. It looked like Shaka Tony stretching all the way out wide beyond the hash marks. May have caused one of the Tigers to jump up front. So that'll back them up five yards. It'll be second and 15 here from their own 17-yard line. We'll stick with the same formation, trips near side. Taylor Jr. still in at the tailback spot. Antonio Shelton is checked in at D-tackle. White with the snap, he's looking to the near side. It's a screen, tunnel screen that is, and cutting up and not getting much on that play. It looked like it was Austin the third. So he gets back across the 15 yard line, but maybe a half a yard if anything. That was great pursuit by Brisker and Shelton finished him off. Yeah, the blockers downfield just didn't pick anybody up. Easy tackle for Brisker, really, on that tunnel screen. Third down and long here for Memphis. Third and 15 with 6.15 left. White rolling to his left, throwing out wide. Almost intercepted. Brisker was all over it again. We've mentioned his name a lot this quarter. And Memphis is going to have to punt again here in the second quarter. It's been a punt fest for the Tigers. Memphis started 3 of 4 on third down. They're 0 for their last four, Mitch. Penn State's third down defense has really stepped up. And Memphis has been behind the chains because of penalties and Penn State pressure. They just have not been able to go downfield. I'm going to tell Memphis what we said to Penn State earlier. Go back to the run game. Where's Kenny Gainwell and Patrick Taylor? They torched Penn State in the first quarter. So Williams standing on his own three-yard line awaiting the snap. Hamler back at Penn State's 40-yard line. That punt goes off the side of his foot again, but a lot more distance on it this time. And we'll see where... The line judge, excuse me, has this ball marked. And he is still trotting up that near sideline. And it looks like around the 43, 44 or so yard line is where Penn State will start. So another great chance at field position here for Penn State. They lead by eight with six minutes and one second left on the clock. We'll be right back with more of the 84th Cotton Bowl Classic here on Com Radio after a few messages. Penn State has really dominated the second quarter of this Cotton Bowl game here against Memphis. They went down earlier on 13 to seven after the first 15 minutes, but two unanswered touchdowns and the ball back just short of midfield. Have the Nittany Lions feeling pretty good right now offensively. Mitch Stewart here with Brian McLaughlin as the Nittany Lions drop back out with Sean Clifford. Six minutes left to go in this first half of play. The ball will be on the 44 yard line in Penn State territory along the near side. Jerdy Brown has checked back in at running back. That's been the difference for Penn State as they have established the run game of late. Trips to the far side for Clifford. Now he's checking back to the sideline. Dotson, the lone receiver along the near side out to Clifford's left. Clifford awaits the snap, back behind his own 40. He's going to hand it to Journey Brown. What a jump cut by Brown. Journey Brown with all the room in the world. 10, 5, touchdown Journey Brown. 56 yards for Journey Brown, his second long score of the day. And the Penn State running backs keep up the clinic they have been running on this Memphis Tigers defense. 27-13 with 5.51 to go in the half. Untouched, Journey Brown. How about it? Five carries, 96 yards. That was an easy one. House call for Journey Brown, and Memphis is in trouble. They are reeling. Offense hasn't been able to figure out, and they can't stop Penn State. Well, you like that if you're the acting offensive coordinator, Tyler Poe, in a 10-second, 56-yard drive. That, that'll get it done. That'll do. <laughs> you, that'll play for sure. We'll, we'll keep it here after the quick score by Penn State. Good afternoon, my name is Mitch Stewart. Penn State football is officially Dallas bound. On Sunday, the Nittany Lions found out their bowl destination and opponent. They'll be heading to Texas to take on the 17th ranked Memphis Tigers in the Cotton Bowl. This is Penn State's fourth appearance in the Cotton Bowl. 
Their last was in 1975 when the Lions beat Baylor. Meanwhile, James Franklin isn't leaving Penn State anytime soon. The head football coach and university came to an agreement that will keep Franklin at Penn State on a six-year contract through 2025. The terms have not been released yet. Franklin reacted to the news on Twitter following the announcement saying, quote, it's not often a coach gets an opportunity to move back to their home state and coach the team they grew up watching. A major piece of Franklin's coaching staff will look different when Penn State travels to Dallas at the end of the month. Offensive coordinator Ricky Ronnie accepted the head coaching position at Old Dominion University yesterday, ending a nine-year run on Franklin's staff dating back to their time at Vanderbilt. Ronnie had served as Penn State's offensive coordinator over the last two seasons. After a blowout win over Wake Forest last week at the BJC, Penn State men's basketball suffered a road setback on Saturday, falling to number six Ohio State. Tonight, they're back at home against another tough team against fourth-ranked Maryland. The Lady Lions basketball team hits the road this weekend on a two-game winning streak. They play at Princeton on Saturday. Penn State is coming off a 78-73 win last Thursday night at the BJC against the Pitt Panthers. Kamaria McDaniel dominated everyone on the court. She finished the game with an eye-popping 40 points. That's the most by a Penn State Lady Lions since 2011. The Panthers came back strong in the second half, but Penn State finished the job in the closing minutes. The Lady Lions are now 5-4 overall. Penn State women's volleyball is moving on in the NCAA tournament after winning its first two games over the weekend. Reporter Zach Smith has more. The Nittany Lions will be in Stanford, California on Friday night for their Sweet 16 game against Cincinnati. That's all for sports. We'll be back with more after this break. Carr with the ball, 7-10 remaining. He leaves it for Oturu. And now to Demir and in the corner to Williams. Oturu against Harrell one-on-one -on -one in the post near side. Oturu bullies his way in and rattles that one up and in. Pretty easy for Oturu as he got the one-on-one -on -one matchup with Hera. Hera's held his own so far today, but Oturu, one of the best big men in the country. Seth Lundy dribbling all the way around the key from the far side to the near side. Now Jamari Wheeler on the handoff works into the paint. He leaves it for Stevens. Stevens, two-handed slam. How about that from Lamar? 26 points on the afternoon. It's 69-61. Penn State leads with six and a half minutes left. Jamari Wheeler is pumping the crowd up. A clutch basket as Minnesota had pulled back within six, as tight as it's been since very early on in this game, definitely back towards the first half. 10 seconds up to the shot clock. Oturu, the 18-footer, he nails it from the wing. A tough mid-range bucket for the big man. Well, just a good shot there from Oturu, but you notice on that possession there, we saw the Wheeler-Hara double team on Carr again, and he had to kick it back out. We see more of that. Carr's going to have a tough time getting up the buckets that he's been getting in the second half. Six-point game, six minutes left. Isaiah Brockington with the ball for Penn State. Oturu and Stevens both with 26 now. The Stevens pass tipped away by Kalsher. It'll stay with the Nittany Lions with 13 seconds left on the shot clock. Lamar Stevens, an emphatic slam on Penn State's last possession, but a very seasoned response from Oturu with the tough mid-range bucket back the other way to keep this as a two-score game. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Stevens at the top of the key. Stevens against Demir. Gets Demir off of the ground, pulls up, and off the back iron, high in the air, and ends up falling to Marcus Carr. Carr up the floor, great bounce pass to Demir, and Demir slams it in. Four-point game as the Gophers continue to work back into this one. Brockington, far side wing with the ball, 5.20 to go. Now working into the lane, Williams stops him, has to kick it back out to Wheeler. Wheeler just gonna reset the offense. 5.10 left to go in the half. Wheeler driving to the bucket, Jamari finishes. Wheeler two for two on the afternoon with five points and a big layup there. Penn State up by six with five minutes to go. Crowd getting up on its feet. It might not appear on the stat sheet, but you know how much of an impact Jamari Wheeler has on this team. Kalsher with the three. It looked like his toe might have been on the line. They're definitely going to look at that one. Excuse me, it's going to be a timeout from Minnesota, I believe. 71 to 68. This game is a one-score game all of a sudden with 4.47 left to play. We're going to take a quick break. 
but don't go anywhere. This one's getting interesting here at the Bryce Jordan Center. Number 22, Penn State, trying to hold on against Minnesota. We'll be right back with more Penn State basketball here on Com Radio. Quick 30 second timeout by Minnesota as we get back into the action. 4.30 remaining, Stevens working in the low block against Oturu, he gets swatted away and Stevens is gonna be called for a foul as Oturu and him fought for the rebound. Stevens does not like the call. It's only his second personal, but Minnesota trailing just by three points after they were losing by as much as 19 nine minutes ago. Oturu will shoot free throws as Minnesota in the one and one bonus. Jones Jr. will check back in for Jamari Wheeler. The Gophers have just been red hot from the field in this second half, 46 points already. 17 of 26 from the field, seven of 10 from three point range. Oturu short on the first free throw though. Jones Jr. with the ball, 420 remaining, working against Carr along the We Are logo on the near side of the court. John Hara now at the top of the key. Fakes the handoff to Dredd, leaves it for Stevens. Stevens, nice move, gets to the rim, count the basket, and one for Lamar Stevens. He's gonna go to the line for the chance to put Penn State back up by six. He has 28 points on the evening. And sometimes, just in these late game situations, the game plan for Penn State is just get the ball in Lamar Stevens' hands. Because usually when it is, some kind of magic happens, finds the open lane there, gets the floater and the call. Just excellent basketball from Lamar Stevens. 28 points on 10 for 20 from the field. Two for four from three, six for seven from the line for the senior. Wheeler checking back in for Brockington. Stevens rattles home the free throw. One more bucket for him and he'll have a new career high in front of this sellout crowd. 74-68, four minutes left to play. Marcus Carr with 18 second half points working against Jamari Wheeler. He's doubled up by Wheeler and Stevens now. Passes it out to Williams. Williams on the far side around the elbow. Has to leave it for Oturu. Oturu on Dredd, a mismatch. Oturu driving it in as Patino demands him to go to the rim. He gets contact, no call, it's all ball for Penn State and they come up with the loose ball. Crowd is ecstatic as Jones Jr. catches a ball that went off, it looked like four or five hands. Bouncing around in the air. Briefly turned into a pinball game. Really did, Lamar Stevens right in front of Chambers on the far side wing, one on one against Oturu. Fakes the spin, now leaves it for Dredd. Dredd the three pointer, Dredd for three from the far wing, Penn State leads by nine and Minnesota calls a timeout with 3.13 to go. Dredd has struggled today, just two for eight from the field, but a clutch three-pointer when Penn State really needed it. 77-68, we'll step aside for a moment, but a great ending coming up here at the Bryce Jordan Center. More Penn State basketball on Com Radio after these messages.